Detroit and you hang around, you got a long way to go before anybody wants to book you for anything because there's so many people sitting around waiting trying to get gigs locally. You, you're just out of the loop. There's no way in the world you're going to get gigs until the people sh see that you suffer a little bit there. Right. And, so, and, and that's exactly what I did for a while there um, uh, in Detroit. I just suffered a bit. You know, I would do gigs for gas money, gigs for $25. I mean, you name it. And, and a lot of the names that we know out today were doing the exact same thing, too. Um, they, they weren't all just all of a sudden superstars. There's a lot of work that went into it. But, um, but at the end of the day, um, came up there, my mother tried to get me to do substitute teaching. I tried it, too. I went to an arts high school, yes. CCS, applied for a substitute teaching job, teaching five-year-olds how to paint. <laughs> I destroyed the art room. I mean, they, they expected there to be an art teacher that came in and had the kids painting the numbers and, you know, be very, very gentle. No, no, clean that up. Oh, got a spot of paint right there. Nah, none of that. I was like, okay, today we're painting in red. And so I just give, put a can of paint in front of every kid. And, and you can just imagine. Old, 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 old. Four and five years old. Oh, nice. <laughs> And this is like a posh school, so kids got on polo and shit like that. And so by the time their parents come home, I got them drenched in paint. It's a big pool of pink in the middle of the floor. They're having weed discussions about me in the boardroom. I don't think the kids like it. They loved it. They love me. Hey, Mr. Parrish, oh my God. <laughs> but the, the teacher staff couldn't stand me, though, because I, I messed up the art room. So they, uh, they, they, they let me go for the next season because they did, I was too messy. <laughs> and so uh, I went back home. Mom, I tried it. I went to school. I tried it. I'm going to get a job at a liquor packing plant. <laughs> and so she was like, a liquor packing plant? I was like, because this was my thinking. I'm going to do something that's totally easy for me to do that takes no responsibility, that will not take from any other part of my person because I knew at that point that I need the rest of my energy to be working towards this music. I knew it. I just I was like, okay, I see what's happening. There's no way in the world I'm gonna I'm gonna work in this place. But it dragged on for like two years, and it was like torture to go into a place and do the same job for hours. So I'm just going crazy, just going bananas, thinking about tracks, thinking about songs, thinking about man, when I'm gonna be out of this rap master situation, and. I took a chance. Um, I, uh, Kenny offered, no, Kenny brought about this, uh, this, this deal that came down. This guy from Applecott Records out of France. They wanted some stuff from Detroit and they were looking for new guys. I gave them four tracks and they gave me $1,500. And I thought that was the biggest money in the world. I was like, I got $1,500 was this the first money that you made? The first one? I was like, I'm quitting my job. So I went in the next day and I quit my job. And they were like, You're quitting? I'm like, Yes. I'm thinking I made it. I'm on my way. You know, that money was spinning up so fast. I went back, I was like, you Got anything on the schedule? I need a, I need a, I need a shift that you want to schedule next week. They were like, I thought you quit. I was like, I did, but you didn't really pay it out. <laughs> Okay, so they put me back on schedule after I blew all that money. And then another deal came, um, and I ended up quitting at that point. And then right after that was when I started the label. And it was very, very scary, <coughs> extremely scary, because you, you get the sense that one mistake in your whole world just reverses and falls apart. And, and it's not till five years ago that I actually started to feel like I'm going to be around and I can continue doing it. And then now, there's other things that are on the horizon that are freaking me out. Like, okay, when is the bubble going to burst? You know, like, like, what happens if, you know, like, what if no one ever buys records again? I'm fucked. You know, what if, you know, people decide Detroit isn't important anymore? I'm fucked. If, you know, what if people decide this isn't important anymore? I'm fucked. But, the, but you can't worry about any of those fears. The thing that I had to get to was, okay, this is what I love to do. This is honest for me. And if this is what I'm gonna dedicate my life toward, then I have to be balls out about it. I can't just 
I can't be safe about it. Like it, it's, I'm the kind of person that needs to put my whole person into something um, to feel feel like I've actually put my best forward. And um, you know, I, I end up I ended up doing that, and it's it's worked out so far. You know. Can we before we come to the label? Um, yeah. Can we? Do you have?